All right. Okay. When I uh, bought this machine, it's a uh, Holzman ED400 mini lathe. I made a video about it, my first impression, unboxing, my first test. And I bragged I was impressed about the manual, user manual, and it helped me a lot. Very detailed explained. But uh, that was until I came to page 58, where I'm gonna try to set up and learn how to use this DRO, digital readout device. I bought this uh, machine especially because I wanted this uh, DRO, so I could uh, measure the size much more easy. And uh, from page 58 in the manual and then eight uh, more pages, it's trying to explain how to operate it. And I found it quite confusing because this is more like a general purpose device. You can use it on mills, on lathes, probably um, not specifically for this. Even though it was included, it was uh, pre-configured, uh, the cable, everything, it was just to put it on. I did make a different holder for it because I have tucked my lathe uh, under my cabinets here. So I needed to get this uh, further uh, in front of the machine instead of the rear part there. But I have to say, the machine, I haven't used it that much, but uh, I'm really satisfied. It's, it's just what I hoped for. And uh, turning on the lathe, it's so much fun, except maybe for this one. It was a bit cumbersome. At least for me, when I turn it on, it seemed to work. I, played around with it, but I couldn't really make any sense of it. And I figured out eventually I need to do a complete setup of it. So you can turn it on and off with a button behind here. And when you turn it on, it will show some numbers, a startup sequence, press the red button and you enter the setup menu. So let me walk through the setup for you to tell you exactly how to set it up, at least the way I thought it made most uh, sense. It's a total of eight steps in this setup procedure, and you move to the next step by pressing this uh, next button here. The first one is as uh, uh, linear. The alternative is to switch over to rotary, and I don't really know what this does. I think it has something to do with the way this device interprets and understands the signals from the LED. The manual didn't really say much about this step. It was pre-installed with the linear and it seems to work, so I just leave it like that. Then next step, and by the way, you can always go back to the previous menu. So you, this is like the menu selector. The next step says 10 and 5. And this step is really important. This was wrong on my device when I got it. If I'm gonna change this, I can press the X to change the value for the X button. And these different numbers is more like a multiplier, how it will interpret the signals and uh, calculate the movements. For my lathe, 10 and five works fine. When I got it, uh, it was set up with two or five. I can't really remember, at least. When I moved on the x-axis two millimeters, the display only showed one millimeter. So just play around with this and the higher number, the faster the counter will be. Anyway, you will figure out 10.5 works for mine. You'll switch it around until you can see the correct uh, movements on the display compared to the actual movements on the lathe. Third settings or the direction of the lathe. When I got this, it says zero, zero. So I switched around the x-axis. Do you want the axis to count upwards when you move it to the right or upward when you move it to the left? I found this settings to be the most logic one for me. The fourth says this is a M. Here you can change it to inches. If you press this, it will say inch. I live in the metric world, so I leave it on millimeters. And this was also wrongly set for my lathe. I don't know really what it does, but you have two options here, mill or lathe. And yeah, I know I have a lathe, so I set this to lathe. It was pre-set up as a mill. Next one is just a setting for how many axes uh, it can measure. You can get these devices with a three, two, or one. This is set up for two axes, X and Y. So this was correctly as it came. 
The last one is just read out some numbers from the sensor. So you just get some crazy numbers here. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, yeah, maybe for diagnostics or something. And when I press menu, you leave uh, the settings here and you are to normal operational status. Luckily, my uh, manual explained quite so half decently all of these steps. Some of them not that easy to understand, but uh, it seems quite harmless to just play around with the settings until it worked as you want to. Let me know if you want me to make a written summary and I can attach it to this video. If you have a similar DRO and you can't really make it work, maybe uh, it's easier if you can follow a written guide. At least I am quite happy with this setup. But then comes the next step and that is of course to operate it. And uh, why is it so smart? And I think it's, it's just genius to have, makes your operation of the lathe so much easier. First, uh, let me show you how you can check that your machine is set up correctly. Uh, the first thing you do is you uh, go to these wheels and you set them to zero, both of them. The DRO is now showing the X and Y position for the lathe. And these are the buttons you're going to use the most. You press them to reset. And uh, don't worry, if you do a mistake, you can just press it one more time to undo, regret your changes. But I would like to reset both of these now. And then I'm moving the X axis one millimeter, like this. And I'm moving the Y axis 10 millimeters. And here you can see the one millimeter and 10 millimeters, or very close to at least. And then I know for sure that my setup is correct. Then it's time to show you how to use it, or at least how I use it. I'm going to make a piece like this. I already made this one and I have the measurements here, how I want it to be. So what I'm going to do now is to find the X and Y position uh, where I'm going to set uh, zero out the DRO. And please don't pay attention to my turning. I am not skilled yet. I'm new to this. Not sure if I use the correct tool here or moving too fast or too slow, but uh, yeah, focus on the DRO for this video, please. And then I'm uh, gonna measure the size and that is 21.75 millimeters. Then I can zero out the Y axis and of course I can zero out the X axis as well, but I wanted to set it to the correct dimension. So I'm pressing and holding this button down for a couple of seconds. Then I can just enter the value. So this was 21.75 and then enter. So now I have set the exact dimension on the diameter according to the measurements and zero out the Y position. And uh, that is pretty much it. The rest is uh, self-explanatory, I think, because uh, yeah, now you have the exact uh, diameter and the Y position, so it's easy to turn with uh, these uh, measurements. Of course, when you're changing the tool, the cutting tool, you need to calibrate it uh, once more. So this is uh, very handy, this uh, micrometer. You could, of course, also use a caliper. Good precision on this as well find this a bit more fun to use. My first cut will be to get down to 9.1 millimeters on the end of this. Okay, my bad. The way I put on the cutting piece was, uh, yeah, I couldn't get any closer. I crashed into the tail stock. What I will do anyway, I will uh, switch out this uh, cutting piece and put it closer to the... Anyway, this is a good opportunity to see how long time I normally use to set up the DRO, because now the DRO are off. I need to restart. The new cutting tool is there. Ready, set, go. First, I take a light pass and leave the cutting tool touching the stock. Then, measure the diameter of the stock. 
a lost enter the diameter into the DRO. And I guess most of this you need to do anyway, even without a DRO. And I think this will in total speed up the process. You don't need to pick up the micrometer that often to measure and calculate how much more you need to cut away and maybe avoid cutting too much and have to start all over. Now you can see at any time what diameter you are turning on. So now it's just for me to continue turning on the lathe and I must say I'm really happy I decided to buy a lathe with a DRO. didn't really hit dead center on this uh, last one. Well, the first one was uh, much better. Uh, here you can see there is a little nub there in the center. It should be like the first one. Anyway, I'm satisfied with my pieces, uh, but this is not really a video where I'm telling you or showing you a smart way to use the mini lathe because I'm not skilled, I'm a newbie, but I hope you could pick up some tips and tricks when, regarding the DRO setting it up and using it. And uh, I will continue my journey, learning more about uh, the lathe and hopefully sharing it with you in uh, upcoming videos. So hope to see you again later. Bye bye.